We're starting from the top. <laughs> Doing it live. And three, and a two, and a one. Sunday, September 15th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast for the Determined Length, the episode number 525. I knew the number this time because uh, this was our second take. <laughs> and I and just realized that all the, the tags and the pre-show banter didn't make it for the yeah. recording. So, it's just... well, it might have because they didn't say anything about it beforehand. Maybe it was just when we went live. Uh, maybe. Well, no. We, we, well, we'll, we'll see. the only thing that's recorded we'll is see. while we're live. It's just yeah, you know, before we actually start the show live. <laughs> Whenever we start anyway. streaming, <laughs> anyways. Possibly uh, all anybody ever heard was just me. <laughs> that would be awesome. Why didn't you guys say anything earlier? Anyway, I don't know if they. they oh, okay, well there we go. Mm. Okay, well there's oh, that well. shit. Anyway, <laughs> hi, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Our live audience is so unreliable. <laughs> oh, that's you. Thank you. I, I'm kidding. Guys. I love you our audience. Such a great start. Just shady, shady, shady. Anyways, Gary, what are we talking about today? Uh, what is confidence? I love how you have like the question mark. It is a song, which is a B-side um, by Garbage. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I think it was in... I want to say it was... I don't remember which single that was on. <laughs> what single was... Confident. Dense. A B side of four garbage. Oh, it was androgyny. Okay. Sure. Yeah. You free your mind, you free your mind in your androgyny. androgyny? Anyway, moving oh, right on along. It's a <laughs> Okay, I'm all confused. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> we should have expected this. This is about as bad as when we changed. Do, uh, you guys can stop me at any time here. I'm trying to crack uh -huh. a joke because it's also the name of a song. <laughs> right, that David and I did not know. So we were like, uh, what? Oh, okay. But it's actually <laughs> the name of a song of, by a bunch of different artists. Uh, not all necessarily yeah. the same. Song, but, but I'm specifically referring to uh, uh, Garbage because, you know, it's my favorite band. That's nice, dear. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. So <laughs> in our What Is series, uh, we've talked about a couple of different things. In fact, now I think about it, I forgot what all we've discussed so far. Um <laughs> in the the what is because we've what done like four of them now a Something few like yes mm -hmm. uh just one moment because i didn't prepare properly oh you're fine <clears throat> uh we did pride self-hate respect self-love yes so uh confidence i don't know why i'm stuck on the wait what is that damon you know uh, is it TLC? Was it? Re it wasn't respect. Damn it! 
I'm totally like having a brain fart. And it doesn't help because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Free your mind. That's in vogue. Okay. Free your mind. Free your mind. Right, right, right. The the but what was at the very beginning of the song? Damn it. I gotta... for, oh, for in vogue? You were asked... uh... God. God. Where's the lyrics? Uh, and you're talking about the In Vogue song, right? Yeah, at least. Uh, prejudice is the name of, is the word. That's what prejudice. Oh, well, pop out like see, see, here we go. Okay, that. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> God, you're like, what's it the beginning of the song? I'm just um, surprised. You know, that... I'm, like, right? I'm surprised you, did, you you were you were singling Damon out for In Vogue. You're like you didn't. Th- you think I I don't know in Vogue? Well, because I was because I don't know what to be. It makes me think of drag, oh, and of course, yeah. David. Is, <laughs> David it, it, was a, it was a very well done, well known, well often done drag song. Like especially when it came out. Yeah. Like it would be for there was a uh, sorry sidebar story as we go off on a tangent. Hi, um, for a bar in Lexington, the, the bar in Lexington. There was a um, prejudice. The so show about quiet. It, like to hear it, go. Free your mind. There you go. Okay. <laughs> See, I I have the album, so I was that's, just trying to look it up. That's nice. Um. Anyway, for many for many years, the um cast of the bar the bar in Lexington would do this song as kind of like their closure because it would be like because all of the queens could do it because you would have you have four singers ultimately. Mm-hmm. So, right. And it had choreography and everything. It was so nice. <laughs> so, well, it's, it sucks when you see it for like the 20th time. Ah, yes. Like, <laughs> oh. Oh, look, it's Lady You, you don't like tradition. Uh, yeah. Okay, I gotcha. Is that that I don't like tradition? Well, it's, like, it's it, their final it, it, song. It, it, you, you, you'd be like, oh, they're doing their final song. Yay. Yeah, but it's kind of like, you know, Donna Summer's last dance every night when the bar closes. You're just well, you're seeing, like, when you go to see the same same show over and over, and they have a tradition of their ending song, mm-hmm. it's expected. Anyway, that, and you don't have to stay. There's no requirements. I went to drag shows before. I just don't That's do it often anymore. Confidence. Like to hear it? Here it goes. <laughs> So that's the song that kind of plays in my head a little bit when we do the What Is series. That was the whole segue point. Was In my head, it was like, what is confidence? Let's do a show about it, shall we? Here we go. So, so for those that want to know, the dictionary ter- um, definition of confidence is it's a noun. And it's the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. Firm trust or... The state of feeling certain about the truth of something are a feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities or qualities. I didn't really want to know because I kind of understood it already, but thanks. I suppose. Well, the the last part is what I think most people <laughs> think of. That, you know, it, it comes from that you know you have a certain ability. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking more about like in terms of like, is confidence something that we work on projecting or is it innate to say like it's just a natural ability that like that people are just confident like they don't have to think about it they don't have to work on it they just are are just in general Uh, yes like for me i've often seen there there are things that i noticed that, that people are confident in Meaning, like, you know, I know I'm going to ace that test because I've been studying all night. Or um, I'm going to do really well at this job because I've been doing it for so long. Things like that. There's that innate um, confidence from, from, I guess, knowledge or education or um, 
background, you know, that they have the ability, they already have um, have the ability to do certain things that they're confident that they can do it. When I think of confidence, that's the part of it. The other part I think of is just like having the self um, knowledge to know, hey, I'm pretty good at this and that and the things. I may not necessarily be good at other things, but I could potentially fake it. Mm. Well, okay. I also think con confidence also has to deal with context. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Where, where there's confidence in abilities and there's confidence in going up to that guy and saying hello. Well, and that's that's kind of where I was thinking of, like, in terms of, uh, you know, the community, that being the bear community, uh, the, you know, uh, LGBTQIA community, like, I think we see confidence differently. And I think it's because of our experiences as individuals that, you know, are identifying as how we choose. And how mm -hmm. people respond to that. I think that that's a big factor in how confident we feel about ourselves and what we do. I think pride is a season in which we feel very confident because I think there's a, a strength in numbers thing that we, mm -hmm. we genuinely feel. You know, there's more of us out and about and being visible and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I mean, it comes from a lot of different things. Like... I've always been, because I've not necessarily been someone who is confident all the time. I mean, I don't know necessarily anybody who is, um, or maybe I'm just not around them very much. Because uh, I've always had, like, body issues, um, mm -hmm. self-confidence kind of things about, like, you know, making things happen or achieving them or whatever the case may be. Um, so... Like, I remember when I was younger and we had to, you know, shower for phys ed for gym and how some guys like they didn't think twice about it. Like they just got naked and <laughs> grabbed a towel and like their mm -hmm. shampoo, soap, whatever. And they just went into the shower, whatever, dick a swing in and everything. And I was kind of like, <laughs> where the hell does that come from? Because I was like, really like. Not only closeted, but like mortified, can like mm -hmm. about the idea about being naked around other guys and stuff. Um, and it's so interesting there because I think more about it now in my forties because I'm like, I'm like, if I knew then what I know now about all the different types of bodies and types and sizes and all the rest of that jazz, like, I think it would have made a world of difference. But because I was pretty much always a fat kid and I was mostly pretty much the only fat kid like uh, especially of my size not that i was morbidly obese but i was always just a big guy mm -hmm. um and was always like that was always kind of a focus in a weird way like i got well, picked on in high some, school mm -hmm. yeah i got picked on in some ways and then like i remember the one phys ed coach he always called me like um big guy i was like and all these years like later, I'm kind of like, why the hell did you do that? Like, why did you like, did you think that that was going to be like a way to give me confidence to lose weight? Like, <laughs> or <laughs> it, it, here's, here's whenever I hear like a, an adult say, uh, referring to somebody as big guy, it's always like, it, I always felt that there were being more of like saying that you're grown up, you're a big boy now. It's like you're matured or something, you know. I never thought of it as in a body size sort of thing. It can kind of go both ways. Um, this so, was just personal experience. Yeah. So yeah, when um, I, I'm just so, kind of surprised to to be like, are you making fun of me because I'm fat? And when I think it's more of like, no, oh, I thought that was just like a thing yeah. that. Adult male said to boys, like, hey, big guy, how you doing? Well, but it would be different, Jeff, if they said that to multiple people. Like, if, yeah. that's, if, if what you're saying is, like, a generality and they said it to other, like, male teens, then I wouldn't have personalized it. 
But because I was the only one that ever heard it, and it was only ever directed at me, that it must be yeah. about me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's that's yeah, how I different perspectives. Because so, yeah. right. yeah. yeah. big guy for some is huh. can be several things. So big guy can become it's. Um, so when I was in Africa, um, in Ghana, um, you got, I got called big guy all the time. Yes, I was larger than most, but big guys also can be potentially like a like a big guy. I'm tall. I was taller than most of the, like most Africans at a time, at a time. I'm also, I was also bigger weight wise than most Africans. And I'm also American and I potentially have wealth. So it was, it's, it's just a, you know, interesting connotation. So I could, I, when I was there, um, I heard it a lot. It's just, it was just like a manner of phrase and it doesn't bother me as much now. Although, in America, it definitely means something different. <laughs> it can usually mean like, hey, you fat, like big boy. Like that's what it can usually mean. That's what I've taken it to mean, especially now. Not so much when I was younger, but like now. Right. Yeah. So, but again. Um, yeah, I grew up in a completely different world. That that context yeah. has never, never even crossed my mind. Yeah. Well, and I sometimes think about this, like in terms of like, you know, do, do younger, do the younger generations feel more confident because this is, uh, I don't know how to say this. I'm just going to say it. America's gotten fat across the board, like period. So there are bigger bodies now than there ever have been before. Just like there are more beards now than there pretty much ever have been before, which by the way, is very distracting. So, <laughs> so when I'm out in public and I see like, you know, chubby guys thick guys with beards like not only do they get my attention because i'm kind of like oh hello but then there's also a part of me that's like um okay like are you are you are you are you friend are you friend or are you foe (laughs) you know you know know, are you friendly for about seven minutes of heaven so (laughs) i mean but no but the you know so you just kind of so now because of how much thicker America has gotten, I wonder if younger generations are more confident, like, because it's more norm than it was, like, when we grew up in, like, the 70s and 80s, you know, where there wasn't as many bigger people. So, and this actually kind of segues into uh, two things that have happened recently in pop culture. Ding! So, uh Daniel Franzese recently Mm -hmm. posted on Instagram a really fucking sexy photo of him getting out of the shower with just a towel. And it kind of went viral, especially in our community. They were all like, yes, like big boy celebrity, you know, and he's been doing this, you know, refocusing again on body positivity. And why can't big guys, you know, especially big gay men be, you know, uh, sexy and stuff. And I think. Daniel, after he came out, I think Danny, you know, Francesi has been working on his own confidence, but he exudes it um, mm-hmm. rather well. And by that, I mean, like, the way it's perceived, the way I yeah. see things. Um, and so that kind of gets, like, to another question I had about, like, you know, how sexy is confidence? I've been told time and again by people I don't know very much and by people that I know very well or are close to me that they find confidence sexy. Like it's, it's kind of almost like uh, in some cases like a pheromone, mm-hmm. like now just as a slight like footnote, there is a difference between confidence and cocky. I'm sure we'll get into that in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but it's how, a, how a person carries themselves and how they, you know, yeah, you know, go through their life, I guess, or, you know, Walk, talk, mm-hmm. all that jazz. I am a strong believer that confidence is sexy. Um, it is one of those things where you... It's not like the proud peacock kind of thing, but it's definitely like it gives you an air of, like, I know what I like, I know what I want, I know who I am, so I'm not worried about, like, failing, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Because I don't think I'm going to fail. You know, it doesn't mean that they won't, but it just kind of gives that like air about them. Um, you know, um, I I know not so much often, but Chess and Hadrian, um, 
are to me perfect examples of like that mm-hmm. confidence, like is sexy kind of vibe. They they know themselves pretty well. They they are able to speak well. They're able to talk well. They're able to look well, um, and and they have that to me air of confidence about them, um, which. It's great sometimes when it works out in your favor, and for most, for the most part, it can work out in your favor. But it doesn't always, you know. So again, I do. I also know that whole like there are certain people that can get confident to the point of cockiness, where I'm going to, and you're going to like like love me and enjoy me and whatever. And I've met, I'm sure we all have met those guys that like. Why do you act like your shit don't stink? Kind of well, thing. Right. And you I mean, you bring up a good point. Like I've seen it at um bear gatherings, I guess I'll call them. Mm-hmm. Um, where there are some guys, you know, that have that, you know, just kind of this air of confidence about them. And mm-hmm. you usually see people follow them with their their eyes or their gaze, or they just make a parade and follow mm-hmm. along behind like a Pied Piper. Um, because there's something about it. They're all like, I want some of that. Uh there are other people in the community though that like their confidence is crossing over into that like cocky thing and some people i guess are into it i'm not like i it turns me off i'm kind of like no like sorry like because the that says to me and, and this is completely judgmental and i'm gonna own it it says to me that the individual is like putting on an air to cover up for something else and i'm like why like what's you know, what's going on there? And I'm quite sure that I've probably been accused of it, you know, in my lifetime. I think the difference is whether or not you're intending to do so, you know, uh, to behave a certain way or be seen a certain way. And I don't ever necessarily, you know, mean to come across as, you know, someone who's so full of themselves, you know, just personally. Um you know, and and so you bring up a good point in like talking about like Chess and Hadrian, you know, as examples that we've had, you know, as recurring guests on the show that they mm-hmm. have that about them. But what's interesting is I know both of them decently to know that that's not technically, oh, yeah, right. Like they're yeah, they're just like the rest of us. You know, they have mm-hmm. moments of self doubt and you know and uh, sadness and weakness and what have you they 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 do have the and that's why it was like yeah like that they're good exa- they're examples that they have that air but that don't you know sometimes that air is just air well and it is funny because i in both of their cases i remember seeing them and being in awe of them mm-hmm. you know because i was like ooh, that 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 a whole lot of sexiness uh, <laughs> fair you know, well, and I was like, I'll I'll take a serving or several, <laughs> um, you know, like <laughs> exactly. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna eat all that up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but the but the thing is, is that you know I get to know them, and then I'm like, oh, like not only are they approachable, like they're they're they come from you know a place of an intention of kindness. Mm-hmm. You know, to to be good individuals, and the more you get to know them, you know, I think they have had a life of experiences that gave them, you know, this ability to see themselves a certain way. I mean, maybe you know, part of it is upbringing. I know for me that I was not raised, you know, to be a. Um, this is going to sound awful. This is a horrible stereotype. I was not raised in a home environment in which, you know, it's like, I'm going to be a man when I grow up. Mm-hmm. I was just let to grow, develop. However, you know, there wasn't a, there wasn't really any molding, quote unquote, um, which was good because then I just kind of, you know, modified and figured my way through stuff, you know, and, and uh, try to determine what things are. For me, as opposed to being told what to, although that's sort of a mixed thing as well, because I know for me, I'm like, mm. I relied a lot on like what was coming from the outside world, you mm-hmm. know, what's an expectation and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think, um, I don't know if there's really a, well, like most of the stuff, I don't think there's a right or a wrong answer. Mm-hmm. I think confidence is about like, 
Um, <laughs> it reminds me of that kind of thing, that joke online about knowing knowing your shit versus knowing you are shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think when it comes to confidence and your skills and ability and who you are and what it is, it really is about like reliability mm-hmm. that you, you know that you can rely on your wits, your yeah. skills, your, you know, what mm-hmm. your, whatever those things are. Yeah. But and for me, go yeah. Ahead. Like for me, like I, if you ask me to sing a song, a certain song, I could probably with confidence, if I know the words, I could probably sing it pretty well. I feel personally, I feel confident in my singing ability. I feel confident um, in my reading ability, no, <laughs> but no, I feel more confident in my singing ability. Yeah. You know, uh, but like, uh, say, depending on where the song is, like, say it's a song, I'll just use it as like, say it's a song by Beyonce or I'll use Beyonce as an example. Uh, I could probably sing the song, but I probably couldn't sing it in her key. I could probably couldn't sing it up that that high. Um, I wouldn't have confidence in those higher notes. I wouldn't have confidence in the the that range because while I could probably hit some of it, I can't hit all of it. Um, you know, and but you know, say put me in front of a piano. I, I don't play piano. I've never played piano. Like like tell me where the C chord, the C like think it. Uh, I don't know. Like I wouldn't. I might be able to guess but i wouldn't have the confidence to be like i can do a test or whatever right <clears throat> kind of thing my no i, I mean i think that limited. i think that makes sense you know and and you said something earlier i think you did about you know the concept of like fake it till you make it mm-hmm. um i don't know how i feel about that like i think that there's some truth to it but it's not 100 percent universal mm-hmm. like Take, for example, sex. I don't really know if you can fake, like, certain things when being intimate with another person until you can actually, like, achieve said thing. Just saying. Like, I don't think you should flag yourself with a red hanky unless you really kind of know what you're into and what you can do. (laughs) Just saying. Um... (laughs) Yeah, it's, you know, it's, again, it's that whole, I didn't even put my words, put the words in it. Like, it's that, I I tend to think of, like, fake it till me because you have that ability to, like, you have the confidence to kind of give yourself enough time or quality or ability to kind of get through things. Now, could you, like, pretend to be, like, a rocket scientist when you clearly are not? No. You know, that just, that's just the way there are certain things in that, uh, that skill level, that skill set, that ability set that you probably don't have. Uh, again, you might be able to do a few things, but you might not probably not be able to launch the ship or launch the ship, launch the rocket or have you, whatever kind of thing. Well, you can, you you can also, to, to kind of flip it on its head a little bit, um, mm-hmm. is, is you could be confident that you can't do something True. like you were talking about the whole piano thing. It's like, I haven't taken a lesson of piano in my life. I'm confident. I'm going to do this wrong. <laughs> True. Uh, uh, I could do some testing. I, I, I know my notes. Uh, so, <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, here it is. Yeah. You, know, mm-hmm. you might be able to, you might be confident that you could find the note that you want, but actually playing a, a song, uh, like mm-hmm. somebody who's actually taken lessons, have practiced uh, doing it, probably not. Maybe you might be able to to slowly ding out uh, uh, hot cross mm. blondes or something. Yeah. So, so while you're you you can still be confident in confident that you don't have an ability in something um uh, and just because you don't have ability in something doesn't mean 
that there's something wrong with you or anything. It's just you never sure. practiced it or anything. Well, uh, or it, don't have a talent uh, for it too. So, but there's also like when we talk about like confidence when it comes to like personality, I've I've been thinking as you you guys have been talking this like sometimes confidence maybe it's just charisma it can sometimes be intimidating for some people too it's like you see somebody exuding this this confidence this this charismatic uh, uh person but then some people can be can find that intimidating be like scared to even go up and talk with them even though like, uh, uh that even though this person could be the nicest person in all the world, like actually seeing, well, if I saw like Chess or Hadrian in person, I'd, I'd walk right up to him, just mainly because I've talked to him before. But mm -hmm. but if it's somebody I know, but they don't know me, I'm probably and I'm like seeing this, that it, it gives me pause, and and maybe that's the lack of confidence that I have in talking to going up and talking to them and starting a conversation which is mm -hmm. probably just confidence and self-esteem well i think there's a couple of things that you're starting to touch on jeff that i want to say is i think confidence stems from experience and um uh, 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 uh repetition like doing it over and over again like i'm thinking about the the job the thing that i'm working on for this project we just recently uh a bunch of us that started it and launched it got notified by quality that we are now established <laughs> we got official emails yes that we have met the, with the training quality standards that we are now established which i thought was hysterical uh you received because, your certificate yeah well we got an email so um i we actually requested well i requested badges lanyards well first i wanted a pin then i wanted a badge then i wanted a lanyard <laughs> and then we talked about flags and then one of my coworkers wants hats <laughs> and then ultimately, I think those Just of us that are this... you'll be fine. No, no, no. This is wait, it gets better. <laughs> We've decided we were. I think you unanimously agree. We want he superhero capes. Ah. Uh, uh... <laughs> yes, exactly. Because we're because uh... now we're established. Damn it. Um. No, but it was so. But what I'm thinking about, my point is, like, at the beginning of the project, we didn't have half a wit clue what we were doing. <laughs> like, yes, true. we completed the training and we kind of knew something, but we were floundering left and right and center and up and down and front and back. Like, we were just like, I'm <laughs> like, and people knew it. Like, when they were talking to us, you know, it's like, how the hell could you not understand how this thing works? You know, as consumers or customers, we were like, uh, uh, uh. Time has now passed, and we've put in many hours, and now when we help people, we sound confident because we know much more what we're doing than we did mm -hmm. before. And I think yeah. that's true across the board. Like, I think about the first time, you know, I got naked with an, uh, in college, I was like, you know, ready to lose my mind because i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god it's really happening because i was you know a bit sheltered hmm. but you know now well i don't know what i say right now but years later you know that goes away because i'm kind of like you me okay let's go you know <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> i know some things like, I now know, I know some things I that I did not know then. I'm uh, confident in my topping skills. Uh, I'm not so confident in my bottoming skills. <laughs> I can't disagree. <laughs> no. He did. <laughs> Took you a Sorry. moment, apparently. Yeah. It's <laughs> like... Well, and I think yeah. it, that brings up a good point. Like, I think confidence comes and goes. Like, uh -huh. it, it, it ebbs and flows. Like, there are times when you're feeling more confident about certain things than you are oh, others. Yeah. Like, like right now, like, if I was to bake, I'd be pretty confident, but not as confident as, like, when I used to bake regularly. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like, in the live chat as a complete sidebar, Lloyd is busy <laughs> making cheesecake, apparently, while he's listening oh. to the podcast. So... I used to make cheesecakes on, on a regular basis, um, but that was before I moved here. 
uh, over seven years ago. So it's been quite a while since I've made one. And, you know, it, it goes to show, like, if I was to make one now, I'd be like, okay, well, I got I got to freshen up on this. Like, I got to, you know, get get back Ooh. into the groove of stuff. Yeah. All you need to do is get out your mise en place, make sure you have your recipe. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you have the correct pan. Right. Oh, shut so, up. Anyway, I'm just like, <laughs> I like, no, sorry. I'm reading, I'm reading what he's making. And I'm like, that sounds really fucking good. Um, but I, I like what he said there, you know, there's a thin, very thin line between confidence and arrogance. The true test of skill is knowing where on the line you lie. So let I want to talk about that a little bit. Like I know some guys that are really like, they dance that line pretty like seriously i know one guy who i think is sexy not only is he confident he's a little arrogant and i think he kind of knows it and there are times when the arrogance comes forward and i'm like nope don't want to suck your dick but when he's confident, (laughs) but when he's confident i'm like yep i'll drain your nuts like right here and now but like that's the issue you know what i mean like there's not necessarily a lot of people but it's it's an interesting kind of mix or a mold like it, it and it's mm-hmm. that thing we talked about earlier like where they think their shit don't stink and it's like but they know that it does and it's like i'm kind of like <sighs> yeah for me that like yeah. that's too exhausting that's why i haven't done it yeah. um <laughs> well that is that dancing just, balancing you know sure. toe that like that tight rope tight like right you know line thing and some people are like literally like you said are literally Dancing between the lines and being very just like haphazardly like what the fuck ever and I'm like yeah like some again arrogance can be very distracting and de- like not very um, attractive it's a very non attractive quote you know I've met people that are very like co- like point like I said confident to the point of arrogance and and cockiness that just really just turns me against them i you know um i'm just re- i'm remembering a bear run and i had one of these guys we were in the, uh who was walking around all weekend long like very very just like i'm the shit i'm the shit basically and people you know sm- some people bought into that and i was like no boo no <laughs> like you're okay you, you look really good but once you start talking and the shit that comes out of your mouth, mm. no, like I'm done. Like I don't even because mm. you have you have a lot. You have a lot to say about yourself. A lot to say about yourself, <laughs> and you know, like I, I feel like it would be like you would be looking at yourself in the mirror while you're fucking someone else, like just to see how well you're doing. You wouldn't really be in, maybe necessarily enjoying who you're with you would just be enjoying looking how you look well so you bring up a really good point damon i think like what people probably find appreciating about confidence is the relatability factor Mm -hmm. can i relate to you do i think that like you will see me for who i am and thereby like i have like it increases my own confidence like in who i am as a person because you know, you actually see me for who I am as opposed to bypassing me. Cause I've seen that several times. Like there are some people who are really all about like themselves and I don't mean that like they're super stuck up or anything, but I'm not one of those people that parades myself around to be seen. It's just not been in my nature ever. So Mm -hmm. like, but I see other people, you know, and God bless them. Like they put on an outfit, they come up with, you know, a, a look, a, a whatever it is, and they carry themselves and they walk around and I'm happy for them. But when I feel that I can't connect with you, I no longer feel like you're confident. I now feel like you're being like you're gone beyond like mm-hmm. like there's an air about you. There's something going on. And it's like now I'm like now I'm not necessarily interested like. I might have thought you was sexy. I might have thought that you had a big old tasty dick, but no. Like that has now that moment has now passed. You know what I mean? It like, is gone. Just, it is done. You know, and, and I think that, and and everybody has something that's different to everybody else. Um, 
I'm not a person that chases. I used to be like, I used to be a person that would see certain people and be like, ah, ah, you know, and, and all <laughs> stupid and stuff, you know, and kind of like follow them around like a lost puppy dog or like, you know, you know, pine and wish and, and all that kind of stuff. And then I also learned like, for the most part, that's not sexy. That's not confident. Um, <laughs> you know, and I didn't that's like that cute, about baby. myself. So thank you. Yeah. And so I was like, mm, no, like, you know, that, and, and on top of it, it was like, they, I realized like I was looking at guys that had no interest in me, you know, or whatever. And I was like, well, why am I bothering? Um, and I think that just comes with experience, you know, and that's now my confidence later in my life is kind of like, if you want this, like, you're going to tell me like, you know, <laughs> that's how simple that is. Want all of this. You're going to have to say you want all this. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got I time. Just... <laughs> I just realized the way we just said that, David, we sound so arrogant. Which, <laughs> I mean, fair. <laughs> like, it's all about me, bitch. All about me. <laughs> if you want this, come get this. Oh, wait. No. Um, well, it, yeah. it, you could also have to take how it was said, though. Because sometimes yes. people are saying something like that, and they're not being serious about it. <laughs> Well, right. I mean, that that goes back to what you were saying, Jeff, about like context. Like, mm -hmm. and I think you know, not only is context important, but intent. Like, what are you meaning from mm -hmm. that particular thing? So, yeah. I mean, if you are, I think it's also about kind of setting expectations. <laughs> you know. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, right, look, right. actually, you're not being called out until now. You, now you're actually being called out. So there you go. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's what happens when you join the live show and you chat in it. Um, no, I mean, I mean I, like, but that's just it. Like, I mean, that goes to show, like, what Lloyd was just saying is, you know, I don't like being called out like this, guys. So here's here's the thing, though. Like, were you actually being called out or do you think you were being called out? And is that about your own confidence? Mm. see like that's why i like i thought it was interesting kind of as a discussion because i don't think there is any simplicity to it i think it's it could be just as complex as the individuals uh -huh. you know as each of us are um complex. yeah it is a complex situation it's never going to be like you said it does ebb and flow it does change over time it does go with experience it also comes with non-experience and you know as someone who's been around like the bear scene for years and and has had to deal with all the other shit, you know, going on with that. Um, I have grown in my confidence mostly through the experiences I have had. Um, I may not take the risk, as it were, because I know from experience that eh, it may not be worth my time, or there's a, there's not a possibility that this is going to happen. Let me see if they show interest in me. That's kind of the way to kind of like play that around is like as opposed to me trying to potentially pull something out there that may not be there i feel a little bit more confident in like laying low and letting things happen as they were mm -hmm. um is it always the, the perfect tactic no you know everyone has probably had that 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 after run like moment where or after event moment where you maybe get a message from someone like, I saw you over the weekend or over the week and I thought you were cute, but I didn't say anything because of A, B or C or whatever. Or I didn't, or you seem so busy or, you know, whatever, like it, that we've all had that moment, you know, where that guy doesn't say anything to you and you're always like, well, damn it. Why didn't you just say something? And you're like, well, you know, again, that's potentially their confidence playing with your confidence. Like you, may not have said something to them and they may not have said something to you. You probably maybe locked eyes for a moment and that moment was gone. And, you know, for some people it's like, Oh, seize that moment. You could have very easily had that. Well, you know, depending on where you are and what your experiences have been or were, you may not take that moment. And that's just the way it is. And it's unfortunate, mm -hmm. you know, um, I have confidence yeah. that if I go to a bar I'm just going to get bored, which is probably why I never go to bars anymore. You know, well, I, you tend, yeah, like I, I think it's right. I think there's like self knowledge, like you know, to know like what 
is going to matter to you and what won't matter to you. Also, things just may not align right. There have been many times that, like, I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, no. Like, now, <laughs> like, now is just not the time. As, as people will understand, if you think about this, our bodies are not 100%, like, right and correct and running effectively smoothly all the time. So you may be presented with an opportunity and you're just going to have to pass because you would rather like have another opportunity where things are going better for you physically than not. You're in confident the in your current state of being. So, so it's probably best we don't right now. <laughs> Maybe in the future. Let's put I it mean, this way. Fair. As a, I as am a running... tired. I'm not going to be able to perform well. Well, there's that. I was thinking along the this the online social meme joke about how like I would love to, but I just had Taco Bell, so <laughs> hard pass. <laughs> oh, true. Um, <laughs> I'm confident in my skills. I'm not confident about what I just ate. <laughs> my gastrointestinal love. Like my gastrointestinal. It was delicious. Right. Don't get me wrong. Right. But now we are. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I do want to. Uh, maybe we just fall into this. Uh, where were we? Uh, mm -hmm. So like, you know, one of the things like some of the things that usually are confidence boosters for me are are. Um, compliments and and um, interactions with people who I normally wouldn't think I would have ever had a chance with. I know that sounds weird, but you know it happens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've been to bear runs and bear events where that are leather events or what have you, where, where that guy that you know everyone is suddenly after like you you notice like oh they're all after everyone and you finally suddenly find out they're after interested in you mm -hmm. like that's kind of it's weird but it's also kind of like hey like i can like okay like you 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 like this you okay cool let's let's work on that and that feels really good and um so let's explore that yeah let's explore that well, you know yeah I mean, I don't disagree, Damon. Like, we're... <laughs> I'll tell a little story. Uh, <laughs> you, and, you and I were at an event. Uh, it was technically a leather event, but we were at the bathhouse where the bear event was happening, the bear activity. Mm -hmm. And I had an opportunity to, to have fun with somebody that I knew of online that I'd been following on Tumblr for probably years at that point. And, you know, when the moment presented itself... I was like, well, okay then. I will gladly, you know, partake. <laughs> and yay. <laughs> right. And then at one point things, you know, stop and he leaned down and he said to me really quietly, he's like, I don't want to come right now. So like I want to go walk around and I was like, okay. And there was a part of me that was like, well, that sucks. No pun intended. Oh, I remember this story. But then I, there was a part of me that was like, hey, now, like, that means that, like, we, we Kudos were there. to you. We were, like, right, yeah. Like, like we were. Good job. You get a gold <laughs> star. <like. laughs> you are doing great. You get a gold star. Maybe you know, we're doing a little too well. Yeah, just, right, right, a little too, too well. Good. <laughs> right. well. Too good. But notably, right. this person came back around yeah, later just... and was like, okay, now. <laughs> like, not like now, like, you know, snap, snap, like, right. quick, but right, right, like, right, right. you know. Okay, we can finish up now. I, I appreciated yeah. what you did before. I've done my, my walk. I've done my thing. I have found, and I want, I want you. Right. Like, right. yeah, like, that's kind of cool. I've had Congratulations. that Congratulations. You get the reward. Hell yeah. <laughs> I've had that happen before. So I mean I think like that I think also goes to show a little bit of the of the the dance, like the complexity, you know, of, mm -hmm. of what confidence is is because one, I didn't expect to ever like have an opportunity with them. And two, yeah. 
when it presented itself, like I was like, you know, I wasn't confident in that moment. I was kind of like, oh, hey, you know, like being my uh, most likely usual kind of, I don't want to say wishy-washy, but, you know, shy, like, you know, um, I'll own it. It was, I was insecure because I was kind of like, I would love to, but I don't know how you feel like how, cause I've, I have not seen to date myself represented mm-hmm. in who you've been with, you know, or whatever. So, and lo and behold, you know, we like, had sure. a good time. So now every yeah. time I see them, you know, on the Twitter, I'm like, I've had that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we're going to have to have a conversation after this show. Cause I think I know who you're talking about. <laughs> Didn't we, didn't we have this conversation previously? It is possible we have had a conversation, but I don't recall. The story was told before. Uh, Different context. I don't think I. Still. Yes. Uh, yes. Anyway. Anyway. We were, we were regaling yeah. the adventures of that. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's it's been very fun, you know, to have those moments with those those people that, again, you don't think you would ever really have. I had, like, same, maybe not the same year, but same similar event. Um, there was an event where I was with, like, a couple of people who I thought like, damn, they're sexy. And like, not only did they want to do stuff with me, they enjoyed it. And you could tell that they enjoyed it. And they were, you know, and it was very much a like, I want to do more of this. But again, knowing where we were, knowing what we were doing, um, the environment presented itself to where you kind of want to search and look and, and, and well, I mean, the reality is, you know, when you're at an event where it's sex positive and sex is kind of the point of, you know, the the event activity. So <laughs> I don't speak. think that was technically supposed to be the point of the event, but it, where it was it ended up being that was the point of the event. Right. Well, I mean, I'm talking about because my experience I'm talking about, we were at a bathhouse. Yeah. So, like, you know, you know, people getting their their nut is kind of the point of that in that kind of a space, you know, in most cases. So because of that, I think there's there's a moment where you're kind of like, well, I have a buffet of opportunity in front of me. I need to check it out. Like, you know, like you go to a restaurant that has a buffet. Whether or not you tend to eat from the buffet, you don't quite know. You need to go take a look, mm-hmm. you know? And I you're always, like, I always circle the right, buffet. Right, you try to look around. I, uh-huh. And, mm, that looks fresh. That I'm, don't look fresh. It must be slightly different from you guys because uh, I I usually grab the plate first and then put a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit. Oh, I like that. Okay. Take it. Take it. Well, it that depends. way, I, when I do my circle, I've already got my plate and I can go away. Instead of like doing the circle, getting your plate, then grabbing it. Well, there's a difference between a place that is nothing but buffet, <laughs> which I just realized is technically a bathhouse. And places <laughs> and eating establishments that have a buffet but also have table service. And I think that's what David and I are kind of referencing is, like, if you have the option mm-hmm. of the buffet, you walk around and you kind of, like, take a look. And, uh, like, is I, is the I, salad I, bar I fresh? Are, are things clean? Are mm-hmm. things neat and tidy? Are they well taken <laughs> care of? Does it look tasty? Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, agreed. Like it's it. Well, it's for me for any buffet. We were I literally just this last week. We were at the um, bu- the casino buffet, um, and the first thing I do, I I do it every time. Is I I don't grab a plate. I go through and I look at everything because you never know. Like every buffet is slightly different in some capacity. Right. So some things are good. Some things don't necessarily. Like you said, some things look good. Some things don't look good. Some things are. Um, you think might be downright nasty, and some things might not be. Um, this place had. That's um, why I never put it on my plate. <laughs> they they had like burger. They were making um, burgers and hot dogs, or like burgers and like mess or whatever from you know cooking them on the grill. Mm. I had just had a burger. Like I was like, I don't really need a burger right now, so I'm not going to go there. You know, just like I I like to know what's there, and then make my decision like on what I want to partake in right. or not partake in. And I can also, like, I, you know, they had a salad bar. I didn't want a salad. Like, <laughs> I didn't want to fill up on bread or lettuce kind of thing. Anyway, yeah. I, I have a vulnerability of salad bars. I love yeah. salad bars so much. And usually I do too. But sometimes you don't want that when you see, like, the, for me, they had, um, 
like a southern cooking area. So they had like greens and and macaroni and cheese and fried chicken and and um, pulled pork. And... Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Away from food. <laughs> so right, but I mean that just goes to show though, like you know, like there's variety, there's flavor, like and and you're you know you kind of know what you want like that's another aspect of confidence you know that you you are realizing okay this is what i want this is not what i want um you know and that's i think something that people can appreciate you know i i know that a lot of times more often than not at least it seems my friends like kind of get annoyed or frustrated when people aren't confident in what they want Mm -hmm. like do you want to you know do you want to go out to eat well maybe Okay. Yes. No. <laughs> which is it? You know, like, um, which I mean, David, you've probably been around. Like, I've classically done this to many a person. When I ask a yes, no, like close-ended question, then I get like an in-between answer. I'm like, no, you can't say both. That's not how that <laughs> works. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, you know, I, th- <laughs> I think that, you know, in in terms of when it when it comes to confidence um it's a, it's about you were, like you were saying at the beginning damon you know when in terms of the definition i think it's about knowledge mm-hmm. what you know what you feel you know how you see things in that moment yeah some people are very confident you know in what they like and what they don't like um you know i think there's always room for the in between i think it's easier when people are being, you know, decisive or definitive actually is what I mean, you know, that they, that they do like this or they don't like that. Mm-hmm. Something along those lines. So I would say, you know, to, to have an awareness to, uh, to acknowledge how you feel about something, even if you don't know, I still think that that is confidence. Like, mm-hmm. If someone was to ask me, you know, um, I'm trying to think of like something I'm not that familiar with. Um, like if someone was to say, like, do you want to come over and play bridge? Like the card game. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I have some confidence in the fact that I'm aware of the game. I'm also confident in the fact that I don't know how I would play like i've never played it before i don't really understand the mechanics of it so that kind of puts me in the in-between and i think that you know that's that's a possibility all the time um one of the things i want to talk about as we uh get moving to wrap up this particular show was so uh because it's timely and i think it relates in a way is have both of you seen the the james corden Mm -hmm. uh, uh video piece about fat shaming Yes. Mm-hmm. I think so. So not only is James Corden just like a cutie patootie. Um, so he did this interesting response on the Late Late Show that uh, that he hosts where um, he was uh, responding to Bill Maher making a comment about how we should bring fat shaming back. And I've really found it interesting because I was glad that it got posted because James Corden was just basically like, no, actually we don't need to do that. Like fat people are well that they're fat. They don't need to be shamed for it. Like, and I thought that that took like a certain amount of confidence, like as a celebrity, as a guy who's bigger, who opened up and was honest about the fact that he's constantly aware of like his size and his weight. Um, you know, and as a person who is a television show host, you know, that uh, is making a living out of being, you know, in the entertainment industry. You know, I, you know, he, he brought us some really good points. And I thought that that took a lot of confidence to talk about the fact that being a fat person is not like an easy thing. And to shame people is actually just bullying. And that's not how you can be an effective friend or person you know, as a human being to help others. If you seriously care about them, then you should actually be making a positive, like, gesture, you know, something that is going to benefit them. And, you know, how being negative to a person doesn't benefit them. Yeah. Voicing your Uh, concern for something would 
you can definitely do that in a non-shameful way. Say, hey, I'm concerned Fair. about this aspect, but you don't have it. It's a much better thing to to do it in a more kindly, essentially constructive feedback uh, mm -hmm. sort of way. Um, so shaming is just mean and cruel and and not constructive because as he he mentioned in that video it's like if you start shaming these people then they lead to it leads to them getting depressed for what's going on and what do they do they as he referenced for himself he goes into the freezer and grabs a pint of ice cream the second one because he already ate the other one yeah Okay, that wasn't the exact verbiage of it, but it was right. a similar type of thing. But um, right, he was, he and was that's bringing... not constructive to to shame them and and make them and put them down. You need to try to lift them up, saying, "Hey, I'm concerned about your weight. I'm concerned about your health. Is there anything I could do to help? Uh, do you need a gym buddy or something like that? You know, offering that right. sort of things uh, instead of." Um, or, or even just offering up recipes because sometimes, you know, eating better food can help out with that too. So it, it's finding those constructive things to do instead of trying to shame them for what they are because that's not going to inspire them. Right. And I think a way that you can give a person confidence or have more confidence in themselves is to compliment them. Like to tell them like, hey, I like when you did this thing. I really appreciate, you know, this, this, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I think that that goes far for people. And I know that I'm not the most like complimentary of, you know, personalities. It's not that I don't think about that, but I'm not I. I wasn't raised in an environment and I haven't conditioned myself to like compliment all the time. Do you know what I mean? To, mm -hmm. to make people feel better because I guess I'm too bitch in my own head. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not thinking to that degree to carry stuff out, you know, and say things, you know, in reference to what's going on. Like as an example, I don't really recall in the past ever saying, you know, like Damon, I really appreciate how you keep track of the things that we talk about on the show and create the tags for the episodes. And that helps keep us, you know, more organized and easier for the audience to, you know, track that stuff. Oh, you don't have to cry, girl. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> I appreciate that you write, write the synopsis as every week, so I don't have to. Right. You're you know, you know, and, and, you know, Jeff, with, you know, putting together the show and being the producer and, and working on those aspects of, of things, you know, that I don't have to deal with. Um but see I, what I mean? Like I appreciate like, it that you schedule all the topics for these shows. I think, but see, that's part of the thing. I think that we uh, generally probably as I want to say as American, I'm going to leave it at that, have like here in the U.S. that we take things for granted. And because we take things for granted, we don't really like recognize the effort and the work that goes into something. And because we don't do that, I think people like have less confidence. Mm. Does that make sense? Like the like the how I'm putting all of that together. Like yeah. because we yeah, don't yeah. because we don't recognize in other people their worth, their value because of their skills and their abilities. You know, by giving them the compliments, therefore they don't necessarily as much maybe feel confident in that. So you know, it's an ego boost. You know, when someone says to you like, "I appreciate how well you suck my dick," or "I really <laughs> like," you know like the way that you, you know, tore my hole open or, you know, whatever. <laughs> wow. I had to lighten the mood. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that like, and that's <laughs> sorry. Are you talking about the cheesecake that Lloyd's making? Or are you talking about anyways? Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's like, and I guess I'm thinking about it because uh, at work, like I, I'm struggling a little bit right now with, with my self confidence in what I'm doing. In like, mm -hmm. am I meeting the goal of what the of what the company overall wants, 
or am I meeting the measurements? Because mm. they're kind of conflicting a little bit right now. It's like if you want everything to be done to the nth degree, then you have to be willing to let someone go that far. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. So if you – but it's like which do you want? Like do you want things done – like, you can't have it all. Like, you can't have it done short, quick, and cheap, like, and be effective and correct. Like, that's most likely going to lead to, like, problems and stuff. So when, you know, I get complimented by a customer that says, I really appreciate you taking the time and explaining all these things and going, you know, this far and blah, blah, blah. It makes me feel better about myself. I'm more confident, like, you know, in, what I'm, in my skills and what it is that I'm doing. So, you know, it, it's just, I think that's what, uh, for me is, is kind of the latest thing that I think we're we're missing out on. And I think that James Corden was helping draw attention to the fact like if you want to help people and you have that much, you know, care about them, then there's better ways to communicate that yeah. than to shame them in that case. Yeah. Agreed. So that is our opinion on confidence. But to, what what do you think confidence is? I mean, guess what, folks? That's the end. Oh. I have confidence in springtime. I have confidence in rain. Sorry, it's a song. It's from The Sound of Music. Look it up. <laughs> I have confidence in me. All right. Yep. We just bookended this show in the weirdest way, making musical references to songs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If if you are confident in in what you think is confidence and and everything, you can let us know. Plenty of ways to do that. You can pop over to our website, comesoutloud dot com. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail dot com. Leave us a voicemail six zero otherwise at three six one C O L talk. That's three six one two six five eight two five five. You can follow us on the socials at the uh, various sites with Cubs Out Loud in the URL. That's Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and of course in YouTube. Uh, you can join our Entourage chat where you can probably find out more about Lloyd's uh, 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 cheesecake at tinyurl.com mm-hmm. slash telegram dash col. By the way, Lloyd, uh, take a picture when you're done and post it in the telegram. I would like oh, to see it. So good. Uh, <laughs> you can find out when we're doing these shows. <laughs> Most of them will be on Sunday mornings uh, 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 America time uh, at uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, but you can subscribe to our calendar at uh, tinyurl.com slash calendar dash uh, You can find some lovely merch, such as some new stuff. We got our new trans consent is my foreplay shirts, as well as uh, take, mm-hmm. uh, take yourself on a mouth adventure. <laughs> Ding. You can find that at the appropriate Zazzle site for your country. Slash Cubs Out Loud. See, we're we're, we're international. It's, it's it's international. If you need to go to, you can go to zazzle.com slash or, or zazzle.com. Scroll down to the bottom and select your localization. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you're not exactly sure what it would be, but it'd be like uh, zazzle.co.uk or zazzle.ca or etc. Uh, for the various countries. Uh, but you can just put slash Cubs Out Loud after that, and you come to our store and can purchase locally. Uh, you can also support us by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. You can subscribe to us through Apple Podcasts, because it really kind of changed its name already. Um, and uh, you can uh, also subscribe to, rate us there, and you can subscribe to us through Google Play Podcasts and Spotify. Find me anywhere on the internet as box box poppy box cub box something or other. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can check me out on Theater Cub Seven Nine on most bear related sites or on Facebook, or you can follow me at pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gare Bear Seventy Three. Uh, if you're wanting to get in touch because of the podcast, please see. So otherwise I think you're a bot and I just decline. Yeah. Just, just let us fair. Know. That's probably true for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Sorry. that's for like anybody who you don't actually have known personally or something. 
<laughs> I know people that just add people. Yeah, I know. I mean, but you know, you tell them where you found them, anyways. Uh, with that, uh, I need to do a thing. Oh wait, there we are. Yet. Yeah, here we go. And with that, say good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. Good afternoon. Oh, it's not afternoon quite yet for you, Steph. That's not yet. Not, yeah, but it's afternoon for you. It is. Yes, it's that is o'clock true. Here time. That's yes, why I was it like, is. Good yeah. afternoon. <laughs> I did put a question mark on that. I'm like, hmm? <laughs> okay, yay. Um. Okay. <laughs> This is like oh, it's so funny the message show. we get after. Like, this is the stuff I get. Some just the random messages I've gotten, like on, um, Fair Form One. It's kind of funny. That's that? all. Just a, just guy like people like ran like again random people that I've never talked to before. Just very interested, and I'm like, cool, like that's cool. Like if they knew me from the podcast, I'd make like, oh yeah, it's nice to like meet you, but. Some don't, and I'm like, oh, okay. Um, that's cool. Uh, why? And what, everybody what, what who is is watching or listening to the post show just heard my bear for one month chime go off. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh, wonder if I've got anything recently. Nope, just a wolf on the somebody signing my guest book. Yay. Oh. Huh. Yeah, it's Apple Podcasts. iTunes is going away. I don't know what's going to happen with iTunes on Windows. Really? Because I just got a. I have a notice that there's an update for iTunes. Yeah. I won't do it yet, but I probably I suppose will it's in just... a minute. I suppose it's just like, at least for now, because they're still updating. At least the the iTunes is just the software to access Apple Music and Apple Podcasts and the separate things for Windows. But because mm. like on Mac OS, it's switching so that instead of iTunes, you have Apple Podcasts, you have Apple Music, you have other things to kind of like. Sp oh, and then the Apple TV app for like the video stuff. I'm just like, well, are they going to make those apps for Windows so people can use their services still in the modern system? Mm. Or what are you doing with that? That's what. What are you doing? Figured. What are you I doing? I haven't quite figured it out. Or are you just going to still just have iTunes for Windows and just be like the software platform to access all these services on on Windows? Oh. What are you doing? What are you doing? What? What? What are you doing? Anyway. Ah. Hello. Apple TV for Windows 10. Aren't you pretty? Oh, I didn't answer my question. Oh, well. Mm -mm -mm. Are you looking at Twitter? No, not at all. No, no. I sense some sarcasm there. Totally sarcastic right now. Totally looking at 
uh, Twitter right now. See, we used to say Tumblr in those cases, but you know. I don't always. I can. I can still potentially look at Tumblr. I just don't as much anymore. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna stop streaming.